Hello, in this video I would like to talk about the difference between a character vector and a character string. A lot of newcomers to R are confused about this, so I thought I would spend a couple of minutes explaining the differences. Now, if you've been in my class, you know that creating vectors is easy. You can create character vectors like the one I have here. I'm creating a vector called DNA, which has 20 letters in it. These are a random sequence of A, C, G's, and T's. So I'm attempting to simulate a DNA string here. The vector is pretty much what you expect it to be. If we pass it to the str function, you can see that R thinks it's a character vector with 20 elements. We can use the functions that we've learned about thus far to verify this. If I wanted to reverse this vector, it's easy to do that too because I could call the rev function. So I reverse it. If I wanted to sort it alphabetically, I could call the sort function. And notice everything's arranged alphabetically. Now relative to DNA that doesn't make much sense, but I'm just pointing out that there there's a number of functions you could use. We could also use the bracket notation, which is very powerful. For example, I could say give me elements 3 through 5. Um, and you can see that the third element of the string is in fact C, and the fourth is G, and the fifth is A. Okay, so I think I've done a good job of convincing you that vectors are, uh, it's a good format. Now, on occasion, you will see strings that look like this. You will see structures that look like this. I'm going to create it, and then I'll explain what's happening. I created a new variable called my.str, and if we look at it, it looks remarkably like the original DNA vector. Uh, the letters are the same, but in my.str it has been collapsed. In other words, the spaces between the letters are gone, and there's only one set of quotes. So in some ways my.str looks to be the same, but it's actually not. And if we try to use the length function, we see that it doesn't really work. It comes back and says it's of length 1. Well, it turns out that this is a character string. So R is like, well, it, it's, it's a single character string, therefore it has length 1. We have to use the ncar function, in this case, to actually determine the length of my.str. Okay, so what this means is that if we're working with a character string, we have to call on a different set of functions to help us out. Now, if you're a biologist, you're used to seeing DNA strings specified in this collapsed format. Okay, um, and there are ways that given uh, the collapsed format that we can turn it back into the vector. First, let me show you how I created the character string in the first place. Um, we learn about the paste function in class, and that's where we take two character strings, um, or we can paste vectors together too, but usually we're we're building strings. We have string one and we add string two to the end of it and we separate it by some delimiter. In this particular case, I call paste with the DNA vector and I use the collapse argument. And so collapse basically sucks out all the spaces and replaces them with no space which is how we get to this collapsed version. So think of this vector Okay, here's the vector, and if I call the paste command with the collapse function, my dot str is the collapsed version of the vector. Okay, that's one way to think about it. Now, as I mentioned, we can look at the number of characters in it, and there's actually a function called substring, s-u-b-s-t-r, that will take that string and allow us to index into it. So, for example, if I wanted to access elements... Uh, five elements starting with the first element, and I could do something like this. Okay, so that pulls out A, A, C, G, A. Now the analog with the vector is like this. Okay. Um, but because it's a character string, we have to use this substring nomenclature, this, this approach. Now if I wanted to, I could take the string. Um, here I'm finding uh, elements 1 through 5. If I wanted to, I could assign um, some arbitrary string like this. And if we look at my.str, you see that 
The first five elements have been replaced with T's. Okay, so if you're given the character string, you can still work with it. You just have to, to remember you need different things, different, different functions. Now, uh, we don't really know about for loops yet. You may, uh, based on your experience with other programming languages, but I have not introduced them in class yet. And I wanted to show you that even in, even in this state, even with a character string, we could, if we wanted to, use a for loop to march across each element of my dot string. And as we do so, we'll just print out the elements. This isn't necessarily recommended, um, but there may be some situations where this is advantageous. It's one way to do it. So the for loop, I've in effect written a small little function that spits out the contents of the character string without the quotes. Okay. Now, if you are given a character string like this, okay, if a user, let's say you wrote a function that accepted a DNA string and you wanted to find its complement or reverse complement, a user is much, it's much more intuitive for a user to paste in something like this than it is the vector form, you know, like this. So one way to take a string that's compressed and uncompress it is to use this recipe here. So we haven't really investigated list yet, and I, and I realize this expression may look a little bit threatening, but let me break it down for you. There's a function called string split, which will take a character string, and it will split it. In this particular case, I'm saying split it up, um, and I use this space a double quote to indicate I want it to be split by spaces. So this looks very similar to the original vector, except, of course, we've replaced the first five elements with T's. That, that's okay. Um, but the string split w looks very similar, except we see this funny bracket notation here. And what we get back from the string split is actually a list. And we don't really need the list at this point. Um, and so one way for us to one way for us to get rid of the list is to call the unlist function. Ah, so if I do something like this, new DNA, and now I have a vector that looks um, and acts like a vector. In fact, it is. See, I can now say length new DNA. I can use the bracket notation as we did before. And so I'm back to the vector format. Okay, I hope this has been helpful. You may need to watch this video a couple of times to fully appreciate what's going on. Uh, but I think it's an important idea for you to understand. Thanks.